r slash ask reddit. People of reddit with scars, what is your worst story behind them? I have a 4 inch long scar on my side. I got it when I was a kid trying to catch bees, stupid I know, by jumping in the air towards low hanging branches to catch the bees in a bucket. One time I jumped up but had a little bit of sideways momentum and impaled myself on the handle of an outdoor caged enclosure that held chickens. After unimpaling myself, I told my teacher what happened and she just said to rub soap and water on it. No idea how I didn't get an infection or something but it healed up fine as far as I remember. That is so similar to my ribcage scar story. I guess it's hard to see the area, so they can dismiss it easier. I even had my cousins telling my mom, a nurse, that it was bad, but she ignored me and assumed I was overreacting, told me to clean it and put a band-aid on it. One inch deep and three inches long. At least I have a horrific scar to show off now I guess. A few months ago, I was sleeping and was shifting a bit in my bed. And when I say shifting, I mean shifting. My face hit the corner of my wooden headboard, which is considerably sharp. I was pretty sleepy, so I didn't realize what had happened until I woke up. I woke up to red covering my face, which was pretty scary. I have a scar at my left eyebrow now. I did something like this. I was sleeping and I rolled off the bed and my nightstand next to me had a sharp corner. I didn't wake up but I do remember waking up 6 hours later and thinking it was steak sauce on the floor. My 6 inch emergency c-section scar. I woke up 7 months pregnant to go to the bathroom and right when I stepped on the floor, a huge gush then splash. I yell for my husband to turn on the light and it's all blood. I run to the bathroom gushing blood everywhere and sit on the toilet because I was in shock shaking and didn't know what else to do as my husband called an ambulance. They put me in surgery right away. I lost 25% of my blood in the hospital, not counting the ambulance and my home. My three pounds daughter survived being two months early. My father who went to Vietnam twice came to the house to clean up while I was in the hospital and said he didn't know if he'd see me alive again by the amount of blood there was. We are two lucky girls. What was the cause of this? Had you had any issues in your pregnancy before this? Glad to hear you and the baby girl survived. Placental abruption. One of the odd docs I work with told me a story from his residence where a girl came in with some spotting. The doc he was working under sent her home because she lived in the dorms across the street and gave her instructions to come back if the bleeding increased. Figured she was close enough. She hemorrhaged to death on her walk over. Not me, but my mother. I don't remember exactly how many she has, but somewhere around 15-20 on each arm. They're not small but not huge, just enough to cover most of her forearms. And it's kind of my fault. When I was very small, I was feeding my dog, a lab, and my uncle's dog, an untrained Rottweiler, some leftover waffles. Uncle's dog stole one as I was feeding it to my dog and bit my thumb in the process. My mum yelled no at him and he walked to the back of the yard and charged full speed at me. Not my mum, who had shouted at him, but at me, the crying toddler. My mum got there just in time to shield me from the attack. She always says it was the worst moment of her entire life, though not the pain. She says the worst part was wondering if she could run fast enough to get me out of the way. What a great mom you have. My mom is great in many ways. Though I very likely would have been killed if the dog got to me, so I'm sure it was a no-brainer to her at the time to do what she did. I was still in diapers at the time, and the dog was at least 90 pounds of mostly muscle. Edit, the dog was so strong, he wouldn't let go of my mom until my dad threw a recliner at him. As in a lazy boy. I have three different cigarette burns on my right arm that have never gone away. The first one came from me being incredibly drunk and telling my friends that they could burn me with it if they wanted because mama didn't raise no bitch. The second one was from being really drunk a different time and my friends telling me that I was afraid to get burned with a cigarette again because it hurt too bad the first time. The third time. You guessed it. My mum also gets really upset every time she sees them. I can't tell if she's crying because she's upset that I permanently scarred my body, or if they're tears of joy because she can die knowing that she, in fact, didn't raise any bitch. You need better friends.
Your mom hates to see you with those drunken ash holes. Fantastic pun. I don't have any gold to give you but we can meet up and I'll let you burn me with a cigarette. Once I woke up from a two day coma, was immediately released from the hospital and I sat on the floor of my room straightening my hair but I was so out of it I put the straightener down on my own leg and left IT there. Annoying. Edit to add the coma story to the top post. Please don't feel bad for anyone or angry at anyone. I am not a boy will be boys mentality but I know that teenagers are so stupid and 14 15 year olds are not equipped for these experiences. I have had lots of therapy and moved on with nothing but forgiveness. I was a teenager and I was drinking and I got drunk and then older teenaged boys started pouring shots down my throat. Like medicine, as I was passing out. Trying to get me drunk enough for compliance. When you get enough alcohol in your system, you fall into an alcohol induced coma. They got scared, long story short they ditched me and by the grace of God, someone quickly found me and got me in an ambulance a few minutes after I stopped breathing. I was overway over the lethal limit and only survived because of medical intervention. They released me because my parents demanded it. They were furious and probably embarrassed after two days of not knowing if I would wake up with brain damage. Edit I forgot to mention the worst part was that I drank half a bottle of Skull Vodka and no one should experience that. Thanks for gold. Have a great weekend everyone. How did you enter the coma? What was it like being in the coma? Did you dream? Was it like sleeping? When you awoke did you feel rested or out of it? Being in a coma is like zoning out in a waiting room and you don't know if they forgot you were out there but like you are too nervous to ask. And then they call your name and you look at the clock and it's been two days but it was only 10 minutes in your head. It's not like sleeping when you sleep you kind of no time has elapsed. I don't believe anyone that says they saw Jesus or God in a coma. I have a very strong faith and I believe that if God is going to allow you to return back to your life, it's a behind doors decision. If he were to reveal himself to people and they wake up, I think it would be too intense of an experience. I think people sometimes need to make up a dream to cope and sometimes religion plays into it. I will say though that when I remember being out, it's all white whereas sleep feels all black. I would attribute that to the giant s hospital lights they leave on in your face when they really want you to wake up, it is not a good nap atmosphere when you are trying to wake a teenage coma patient. The story is in another comment. One small white dots I have in my hand is the memory of one of the worst moments in my life. Not that my life was bad. Context. I spent my childhood in a house that is a kind of farm in the city. When my grandfathers bought it, it was out of town, but today it is part of a very good neighborhood. All the backyards of my neighbors are large, full of trees, with gardens and vegetable garden, just like mine which sometimes makes you stay isolated from other homes when you are in the backyards. I was playing alone in the backyard when I was eight, running in the middle of the trees. I shook my hand up, then it happened. I was hooked in the hand by a hanging hook of a plant pot. It was like a thick fishing hook, old and rusty. And I was alone. Away from all. I could not even take the hook, and it hurt. The sight was scary. I was scared. I kept screaming for help for a long time, standing there with my arm up and a hook in my hand. After a while, a neighbor saw, came in and took the hook and went to take me directly to my mother, who was at home and did not hear my cry. Good thing no harm was done to my hand. I did not even need to go to the hospital, and my tetanus vaccine was up to date. And your vaccine? Who is prepared to be hooked by a sick and hook full of tetanus virus? Well. I was a dunce two years ago. I'm blonde so you already know where this is going. I and my wife lived in an apartment and it snowed and dropped to about 32 degrees and I went outside at like 2 am, being on night shift, left my phone wanted to see if your tongue does stick to metal. It did. I didn't want to scream. In a panic I just thought to fuck it and ripped my tongue off leaving skin and taste buds. It was a sweltering late June summer evening. I had just finished my sophomore year of high school, and like every summer, I was working on the farm getting up bales of wheat straw. 
Dad had gotten hooked up with a road contractor who was buying up every bale we could get him, so this year we got an automated bale wagon to help us increase production. For you non-farmers, this is a piece of equipment that you pulled with a tractor and it picked the bales up out of the field and stacked them, if it worked right, at the barn. It's a loud, whirring spectacle of chains and conveyors and hydraulics, but it saved time and labor and beat the hell out of picking up 40,000 bales by hand. Anyway, on this day, my brother and I returned to the barn, pleased with the day's effort and ready to dump the last load of straw and get back to the house for dinner. I had been running the baller, but when he finished the last load I had hitched a ride on the back of his tractor. Specifically, I stood on the three-point hitch arms, which are the two arms that stick out back of a tractor to attach some types of implements. Everything was cool until... We pulled up to the barn and backed up to unload the straw. I was going to get down and help my brother square up to the barn to keep everything straight and tight so the stack wouldn't fall. However, as I hopped down, my brother did not see me. He switched on the power takeoff, which is an output shaft that uses the spinning of the motor to power implements. Unfortunately, he did this at the exact moment my foot landed on the shaft. In less than two seconds, the shaft grabbed the cuff of my pants, tore out the heel of my shoe, nicking my Achilles tendon, then it took a bite out of my ankle as it pulled my body further into its whirring indifference. I adrenaline grabbed the tractor's roll bar and attempted to pull myself out of its clutches, letting out a death gasp. Fortunately, my dear heroic brother processed what was happening with lightning reflexes and shut off the spinning madness. I looked down expecting to see a mangled mess where my legs once were. Instead, I found that it merely ripped my jeans loose at the waistband and after the plug missing from my ankle, just kind of grazed up my leg. So, that's it. You probably wouldn't notice the scar on my ankle, even though it's really deep and you can totally feel the back of my tibia, if I didn't point it out, but I always do.